Hello. Welcome back to Off Grid Style. I'm Nikki. So glad to have you. I know that recently we obviously have had a whole lot of other things in the news, specifically the last couple of days. We've definitely had some um, issues with uh, cyber attacks. So this kind of slipped through the cracks and I saw it and I thought I would share it with you. The UN has come out with its global humanitarian overview of 2024. This came out yesterday and I have not seen a single person covering this and it's scary and it definitely has some bearing on the United States and the Western countries, including um, all of Europe. So I thought I would go ahead and talk about it. This study was produced by the United Nations Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs. But before I get to that, and this is going to be a pretty short video, I hope, um, I want to let you know about something else I found. Um, this was a published study. Uh, it was from the British Royal Society. It has published the results of an analysis done on the heating up of the earth. They have found that the temperature of the earth began to rise before the increase in CO2 in the atmosphere. And this is the reason for the increase we have heard about in CO2. It is the rising of the temperature of the earth. All evidence from the analysis shows a one-way relationship where the rising temperature is the cause of increased CO2. Okay, so the rising temperature of the earth is the reason for the CO2. These dozens of scientists, this just came out, firmly state that the changes we are seeing are not in any way due to a human factor alone. The human factor doesn't even account for the 4.5 billion years of alterations that we've had in our weather and in our temperatures and CO2 levels. The authors of the study state that the natural changes in CO2 caused by the rise in temperature are three times greater than the 4% that is produced by humans. Okay, so I needed to put that here because part of this UN Global Humanitarian Overview focuses on uh, weather changes and climatic issues. So I definitely wanted to, um, I don't even know if climatic is a word, but I can't use the actual word or I will be flagged. So anyway, um, let's see what it has to do with it. So let's go back. I'm going to cover the global issues quickly, and then I will bring it home to the U.S. and to Europe specifically, and what this means for all of us in 2024. So let's review what's going on globally. UN is stating that in 2024, nearly 300 million people around the world will need humanitarian assistance and protection due to conflicts, weather emergencies, and other issues. 74.1 million people will need humanitarian assistance in East and Southern and yeah, Southern Africa. In the Middle East and North Africa, 53.8 million people will require assistance in 2024. The crisis in Syria resulting in 32.5 million people in need, both inside Syria and outside Syria in neighboring countries. In Asia and the Pacific, 50.8 million people are in need. 30 million of those people are due to the Afghanistan crisis. The Latin American and Caribbean region is now home to 30, almost 39 million people in need um, due to Venezuela, primarily Venezuela. And in Eastern Europe, 16.8 million people are in need because of the conflict in that region. There are three main drivers to these needs. Number one is conflict. Obviously, we have way more conflict than we have had in the recent past, and that is more entrenched, and it's got devastating consequences for civilians. As an example, in 2023 alone, the eruption of widespread conflict in the Sudan and those issues that started on October 7th in a certain area of the Middle East caused a dramatic spike in civilian deaths. In five weeks alone from October 7th on, the number of civilians killed in the Middle East 
has been equivalent to almost 60% of the total global number of civilians killed in 2022, which 2022 was already the deadliest year since 1994. So we've already accounted for 60% just in that five weeks of the total of 2022. The second issue that the UN is attributing all of this to is the weather issue, the climatic issue, if you will, even if I did make up the word. Um, it's leaving a trail of destruction, according to them. It is expected that 2023 will be the hottest year on record ever since record keeping began. 2024 is expected to be no better. The third reason is economic factors. Economic dynamics are overlapping with conflict, weather disasters, infectious disease outbreaks, and other issues, all requiring humanitarian need. What does that mean? It means they want money and they want food is what that actually means. They just say humanitarian need. Um, one in five children is fleeing in or fleeing from conflict. Sorry. One in five children is living in or fleeing from conflict. One in 70 pe 73 people have been forcibly displaced. And 29 countries have reported cholera outbreaks in 2023. As a result, more people are displaced now than at any other time since the beginning of the last century. One in 73 people have been forcibly displaced. It's doubled in the last 10 years. Acute food insecurity is a reality for 258 million people in 58 countries, driven by armed conflict, economic shocks, weather extremes, poverty, and inequality. The developed countries, the Western countries, and the United States and Canada are not considered part of that, which I will get to in a sec. Um, wasting threatens the lives of 45 million children under five years old, which accounts for 7% of all children in the, United, in the world. Of this figure, 13.6 million are already suffering from severe wasting, placing them at imminent risk of death. So here are some facts to bring this home. They want 45, I believe $45 billion and food contributions as well to help with this. And yes, 100% 100, 100 I understand that there are people that are in horrible conditions, vastly more horrible than anything that we have dealt with yet. I get that, but I just want to let you know what they're asking for for 2024. The amount of people in the U.S. that are food insecure is growing. Food insecurity is an official term from the USDA. It's when people do not have enough to eat and don't know where their next meal is coming from. That is frightening. 44 million people, including 13 million children, are now experiencing food insecurity on a daily basis. 44 million people in the US alone. In Europe, just for all of you who watch from over there, roughly 6% are food insecure, even though those countries actually have subsidies to try to help those people. Um, they're much smaller countries for the most part, so they um, don't have uh, nearly the cost the cat's playing with my chair, sorry. Um, they don't have nearly the costs involved in, in doing those subsidies that we do here, for instance, in the U.S. with our 330 million people. So they are doing what they can, but they're still suffering 6% of them from food insecurity on a daily basis. I also picked up a little tidbit from Bloomberg. India has now placed onions in addition to wheat and rice on its restricted export list. India is the number one exporter of onions and rice. Russia is now the number is, was the number one exporter of wheat, accounting for roughly 24% of the world's imports of this valuable commodity. So India is now saying, nope, nope, sorry, sorry, we are restricting the export of onions, wheat, and rice. You gotta be special to get it from us. We are going to keep it for ourselves. The food shortage is not getting any better. As a matter of fact, it's getting worse. Many countries are now stockpiling foods that they have normally 
exported in the past. I could not find any exact numbers on most of these countries because they do keep most of their information under wraps unless they really want you to know it for some reason. But I found articles that stated that Russia, China, North Korea, and India are all stockpiling foods. That is a warning to all of us that food shortages are going to be more prevalent and prices of what we can get are going to be higher and higher this coming year. Supply, supply chains will also be affected. The Global Food Security Index just came out as well, has ranked the US 13th out of 113 countries in food security. It's not even in the top 10 for food security. All my European people, every country in the EU ranked above, including England. Sorry, England's not in the EU, but you know what I mean. Uh, England was involved as well. All of them place above us. Most of them are in the top 10. Additionally, more money and more food from UN member nations will be devoted to helping those in war-torn countries. But there are no provisions, none at all, at least in the US, to help the 44 million and growing people who are on the brink of starvation right now. We are facing a food crisis of our own. So what are your thoughts? What do you think about this? Do you think that there should be some type of grassroots push to feed our people and, and get them off of this food insecurity train first before we begin you know, helping all of these other countries, which obviously they do need help. What are your um, thoughts and concerns about all of this? What are you gonna do with this knowledge? Are you gonna begin to stockpile more of certain items to make sure that you have enough? I'm always curious to know, you know that. I want to hear your thoughts, I wanna hear your comments. Please like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see y'all again soon. Thank you.